I need to call the roll uh, for those that may not be on the, uh, may just be on um, from the public. Dan Eisenstein. Yep, I'm here. Katina Beard. Hello. Monty Burks. Monty's on. Uh, Pamela Sessions is on. Here. Robert Nobling is on. Mm -hmm. Shotzi Brunner is on. Yes. Kayla Calloway is on. Yes. Yeah. is on. Yeah. Angie Thompson is on. And Bob Biro is on. Next order of business, uh, you have minutes from our. Uh, let me do just want to do one thing okay. first, okay? Um, I just wanted to just recognize the fact that this is Bob's last meeting as our co chair, our inaugural. Uh, co chair, and this is April Fool's Day, and that's a horrible trick to play on us. Uh, however, uh, we really just so appreciate um, everything that Bob has given to us and for us. And uh, I have a, a couple of uh, people that would like to say a word or two. So, Carol, yeah, mm -hmm. you, you know, Heidi, yeah, we're gonna turn it this way so they can see you. Can you go into the Yes, I'd like to introduce um, Carol Etherington. Carol is a member of the Board of Health, um, and she uh, is a longtime friend of Bob's and uh, would like to just say a few words on behalf of the board. And then Heidi Bennett, who you all recognized from our last meeting, who also is a longtime colleague of Bob's is here as well to say some words for Bob as well. So, Carol, thank you. And thank you all so much for inviting me, for inviting us. Um, Bob Biro has been in my life professionally and, and then over the years personally for 40 years. And we have worked crises, situations, um, disaster situations nationally, locally. And I can't say enough about what the city owes to this man. Um, he has been instrumental in helping support police officers through the many, many years. Um, has helped them who might have been struggling get a quality of life. And some actually have a life. And in doing some international work, and then um, because of that being called to 9 11, post 9 11, uh, the organization allowed me to bring someone who had a lot of expertise in mental health. And I chose Bob Biro. And so he and I worked together um, in lower Manhattan for a number of weeks. And having him with me and with the team of very seasoned volunteers was a gift that none of us will ever forget. So it is especially important to me to be able to, to be here with him in person and to, to be able to say to this audience um, what a gift he has been and will continue to be to this community. And I thank you so, so much for giving me the honor of being here and saying that. I, well, I, I can't follow that very well. So I will just say this. I echo all those sentiments wholly. And Bob, thank you for all you've done for Metro Nashville Police Department. We counted on you in the beginning. We counted on you in the end. Thank you so much for the support you've given us this week, or this month rather, with our COIA accreditation. Bob has always come through and supported this department, and we are forever grateful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Not fair. Oh. You just swipe out this way. Thank you for taking the time to do that. Thank you. Yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. Just wait just a second, Carol, until we get her taken care of, and then she can walk you. Okay, so that was um, so special to be able to have Carol Etherington from the Board of Health here and also to have Heidi. Um, and we also have a little, 
uh, some special words from uh, the mayor's office. So I'm going to turn this to Dia Cirillo and let her take that from there. Good evening, members. It's good to be here with you tonight. I am particularly pleased to be here for Dr. Vero's last meeting as private sector co-chair. As was announced last year, Bob was is retiring next month after 40 years at Centerstone. Bob, there is some serendipity that I had the good fortune to work with you last year and now can share this mayoral proclamation. On behalf of Mayor John Cooper and the Mayor's Behavioral Health and Wellness Advisory Council, I am delighted to say that today is Dr. Bob Vero Day. This mayoral pro proclamation identifies some, but not all of Bob's accomplishments and contributions to this council, the field, Metro Nashville, and to behavioral health in general, but perhaps most important to our lives as a beloved colleague, friend, and mentor. Angie has asked me to read the proclamation and it states a proclamation recognizing Dr. Robert Bob Vero Day. Whereas Dr. Robert Bob Vero has dedicated his 40 year career to advancing behavioral health systems and services for the most vulnerable and whereas Dr. Vero started his career in direct service and carried with him a deep passion for the most vulnerable with behavioral health needs as he moved into management and whereas he serves as a consummate colleague, advisor, mentor, and friend to countless professionals in the field and across Metro Nashville, and whereas he envisions a robust future of health and wellness for Metro Nashville and the region that creates access to behavioral health services for all residents in need, and whereas he has provided outstanding leadership to and faithfully served as the inaugural private sector co-chair of the Mayor's Behavioral Health and Wellness Advisory Council, and whereas he has worked over the course of his career to expand the reach and impact of Centerstone Inc., serving the most vulnerable in our community, and whereas he has served on Tennessee's Long-Term Health Care Task Force COVID-19, representing the behavioral health needs and impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on all Tennesseans, and whereas his community involvement includes active volunteer board member for several nonprofit organizations, including Cumberland University, where he's the member of the Board of Trustees and serves as secretary and the tenant and, and serves as secretary, and the Tennessee Association of Mental Health Organizations, where he has served three terms as president. And whereas his contributions has, have been recognized as he received three Professional of the Year awards from NAMI and the 2013 National Business Journal's Healthcare Hero Award, among other, others. Now, therefore, be it resolved, I, John Cooper, Mayor of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, celebrate his 40 years of faithful service to both consumers of behavioral health services, the systems that serve and support them, and proclaim April 1st, 2021, Dr. Robert Bob Barrow Day. Congrats, Bob. Thank you. Mm -hmm. that person. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Well, right. <laughs> are we off to the minutes now, Bob? I think we're off to the minutes. Oh. There we go. Okay. 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 Being a part of that, um, I'll never forget this April Fool's Day. Sure. Yeah, Bob, every April Fool's Day, you'll be the first to come to mind. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> well, I must say it's uh, <clears throat> hard to find not words right now, but a voice. Um, I just uh, can't tell you how much this means to me in such a such a heartfelt way. Um, so many of you heard me say this. Uh, this work is so privileged in um, this group in particular is such a, a privileged group of colleagues to work among. Um, I just felt like there's, uh, you know, no more special work than the work we're invited to. To help people change their tomorrows um, and that's what we're that's what we're committed to right in all the walks of life and the roles and responsibilities we represent. It keeps coming down to the same thing. It's uh, understanding the humanness. 
of our friends and colleagues and neighbors and communities and being them for them, being there for them in their most important times of need uh, to make sure they get the care that they need and so deserve. And uh, just I want to thank each of you for being part of my privileged walk and career in this area. And I do hope that there's a way for me to continue serving in, uh, in a number of capacities. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. All right, what a gift, Just what a gift. Um, minutes from February 4th, <clears throat> and you have minutes in your packet. Uh, I will entertain a motion for acceptance of those minutes. So moved, Dan. Thank you, Judge. Is there a second? I'll second it. I second it. Any, <clears throat> any discussion about those minutes? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor of accepting the minutes as written, say yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Any opposition? Aye. All right. Thank you. Minutes pass. Yeah. Uh, Katina, uh, again, with our appreciation for being willing to chair our ad hoc committee on violence interruption. Um, I know as a council, we remember uh, the mayor's ask of us, uh, Mary Paul specifically uh, carried with her to our last meeting, the ask of the mayor that this council look um, at violence interruption uh, opportunities uh, within our community. Uh, we pulled together an ad hoc task force. Uh, Katina, again, you were so gracious to be willing to lead that task force. And I know you had, because I was privileged to sit in on the group's first meeting this week, uh, you had your meeting this week, and we thought this is on the agenda tonight for you to be able to just provide an overview, thoughts on that meeting, um, next steps, but uh, it's your time. Sure, and let me just start, Bob, by saying thank you for your service on this committee uh, and your work in Centerstone, and I know for myself some days we wonder if it's all been worth it, and I hope that you know that it has been and that your service uh, will uh, always be uh, acknowledged and uh, you will be seen as uh, a leader in this work and a mentor to many of us who will continue to strive. I hope that my background, of course, it's gotten loud because it's my time to talk, but I am downtown and so I'm hoping to get through this uh, with as little background noise as possible. But Bob, I wanna just thank you for your service here on this council and uh, just in our community-based organization life and world in Nashville. So the ad hoc committee did meet um, on what I think was Tuesday, uh, and we had great presentations from Inspector Imhoff around violence, our heat maps, uh, where we have the highest homicide rates and violent crime, uh, and we had a great discussion around that information. Uh, Dr. Stovall, Jeff Stovall, our very own, gave us a very uh, uh, intriguing, intriguing is not the word, but I think, um, thought-provoking conversation around behavioral health and violence and the intersection in whole health. And uh, it left us with uh, both presentations, provided us an opportunity to have great dialogue uh, around different um, models that are already existing in California and in Colorado, what, you know, it, it allowed us to dream a bit about what that could look like here in our community, uh, but it also left us knowing that we had to answer a few more questions in terms of what what is the data that's associated with that in terms of health, behavioral health, uh, what uh, models uh, are already there that exist that we can draw from, uh, both of those are going to be steps towards giving the mayor an answer or a response from this council uh, in terms of our role as the BWAC in addressing uh, violence prevention uh, and the impact of behavioral health uh, in this in our community. So there are many others on the call. Uh, if, if I missed anything, uh, feel free to chime in, but we are uh, going, our next step is to bring the uh, ad hoc community back together with, um, I think, uh, data around those points that were discussed and drafting uh, a statement more so uh, to the mayor's office in response to his request of this committee. Okay. 
comments from anyone else who attended the ad hoc committee meeting? I will just make one note because it still sticks with me uh, that Robin made the statement that this work could be ground setting just as the beginning works of ACES. And so I believe that I do believe that this committee could provide uh, the steps or the foundations for this, for our community to really look at the intersection of behavioral health and violence and the whole health of our community. So that, that does still stick with me. Yeah. And this is Angie. Um, I think one of the things that I took away was we will have an immediate uh, or a near term response to uh, the mayor's office regarding the request, but then there's going to need to be some even deeper work. So we're looking at being able to respond and let him know where, where we are in the process, but then also respecting the fact that um, in order to really provide the level of information. Uh, and recommendations that he's asking for that it is going to that is going to be a longer term project. So, uh, we had a great attendance at the meeting and uh, thoughtful discussion and the next step, uh, Sheila Callaway has uh, is going to co chair with Katina. So, late next week, uh, Katina. Sheila Callaway, myself, and Dia will be meeting to just do some uh, debrief and talking about next steps on this. So just watch for your calendar. You'll watch for another invitation, and then we'll move forward from there. I'll be rushing. Thank you. I think I got your message today, Angie, and I'll be I'll be prepared. Excellent. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much. And Katina, again, thank you. Um, yeah, Jeff, uh, thank you too for the work you put into preparing for that meeting. Uh, couldn't agree. Um, any more than what Katina just said about nice, a nice balance, you know, as we look as we looked at um, data right around violent crime um, throughout uh, throughout Metro Davidson County, uh, a nice a nice reminder, a nice counterbalance to the beginning of our work about making sure right as we look at uh, as we look at violence that we're making sure we look at violence through right with um, the lens of behavioral health care. Um, the impact on overall health care and wellness, uh, and just to make sure as we're moving forward with our recommendations, um, we really do it in a, in a very, very data informed way, but also systemically um, from a good informed health care um, and wellness perspective. Because um, we know this is, um, it's complex, right? I mean, it's, it's complex. Yeah, it is, so and, and I, I really feel like we have the opportunity to uh, be heard and say something that's valuable as part of a coalition working on this. So this is great. Yeah. And this is Robin. I think that we have an opportunity to impact the holistic health of this community in, in, a, in, a, in a really broad way through this, the impact of this committee. Thank you. Okay. Any background for yeah. yeah. Um, so um, Dia is going to join us again. You all know Dia has transitioned to the mayor's office, and um, we're excited for her new role there. She's a uh, she's a senior policy advisor. Uh, her portfolio has all of the health components in it, with the exception of COVID nineteen, uh, which is in another it's another person's portfolio, but. As a part of that, um, she's really been a champion for uh, behavioral health needs in the mayor's office. And most recently, the mayor um, did send out a press release about some money that's being released, $10 million. And uh, with some of that money being designated to behavioral health, um, I sent you all just shortly before the meeting an actual copy of the press release on this. The D is here tonight to tell us more about this and. Uh, be able to take some questions. So, do you? Hi, folks. Um, as always, it's great to be back with you all. Um, and um, so, really hot off the presses, mid March, um, the mayor's office announced um, $10 million in one time local support grants um, that are being um, infused into the communities. Half of that is going to the Barnes Fund for Affordable Housing, $3 million is going to partnerships and innovation and community safety. Um, so it's it's sort of a perfect topic and follow up to the subcommittee on violence prevention. Of those 3 million, 1 million is dedicated to behavioral health crisis response initiatives. The thinking behind that piece is really 
to utilize some of those resources towards the behavioral health needs assessment. I think we all recognize the really marked uptick in um, conditions of behavioral health in um, individuals presenting with anxiety and depression. Um, and um, this is a perfect time for the city to be taking a deeper look at what resources exist across uh, Metro Nashville. I think in addition to that behavioral health needs assessment, I think we also really want to get, want to get a handle on um, providers um, of color um, in, uh, in and providing behavioral health services. Uh, we know that um, the race and ethnicity of a provider can greatly change health outcomes for different populations of color. Um, so we, we want to understand um, how that is reflected across the city. Um, you know, I think another portion of that is really um, uh, Angie's division has really distinguished itself um, with the opioid and overdose surveillance database. Um, and I think there's real interest, um, increasing interest to look at the opportunity to really um, dig deep into mental health data in a similar fashion and to better understand what's happening throughout Metro departments and agencies and through um, the criminal justice system. Um, and so um, that would likely be a component. And then finally, um, you know, as the press release discussed, um, there will be some funds there to really pilot um, some new services that can augment the mobile crisis services. Um, so that's sort of the picture of the 1 million. The additional 2 million around community safety um, creates a 1.5 million grant uh, fund um, to support group violence intervention strategies um, at the community level and in hospitals. That will be um, directed by an advisory committee that is in the process of being formed. Um, the mayor also recently announced uh, the hiring of Ron Johnson to serve as the project director um, over these funds. Um, so I just wanted to be sure you were all aware of that. These funds go to the council on April 6, uh, hopefully to be approved. Um, and from there, um, we're out, out of the gate, as they say, in time for the Kentucky Derby. <laughs> I can take questions if there are any. It's Pam. I have a question. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, okay, so tell me again what you said about um, part of the funds will go to something with mobile crisis. I didn't get all that. So, you know, the, the funds, the thinking is, is that the funds will augment, you know, be in addition to the mobile crisis services really to um, support pilot projects um, to get off the ground. So not not to mobile crisis, just to just to augment whatever's going on. I mean, I yeah, it, what is happening in crisis? I mean, I I think that's a decision to be made as as things formalize. So I don't think that decision has been made yet, Pam. Um, but you know, certainly I will provide an update as soon as these funds are uh, passed through City Council. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, just a little more about the needs assessment. Uh, you know, we have really worked on that for quite a while, uh, trying to find funding for that. And so I was really excited to hear that the mayor is committed to that. The mayor is very interested in data and how uh, to use data to move the needle on the needs in the community. But the first thing we have to know is what do we have and what do we need? And so I was so pleased to see that a part of this money will be able to be dedicated to that. Uh, and it's just a matter of, I think, after it goes through council, we'll have to figure out what are the next steps uh, to get that work done. Um, so. Mm -hmm. Other thoughts or questions for Dia or just reactions to the fact that money has been allocated? Do we have any kind of deadlines for for um, for this? So um, the good news is that these funds don't have an explicit expenditure deadline. Um, certainly, uh, you know, I think it would be everybody's intent to mobilize it quickly and 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 release it quickly. 
Okay, what about application deadlines? You know, I really think that that the, the all those decisions will get made as soon as we get um, out, you know, out of the city council approval process. Okay. You know, I asked Angie uh, potentially to come in on a needs assessment just to remind us that it really is. We hope it's you know in part the culmination of so much groundwork that this council laid over the last couple of years. Right? You know, we we looked repeatedly. Um, you know, after we came to a real clear agreement uh, consensus among us that that would be the next important step in truly identifying uh, those known gaps in Davidson County that we know um, right, are, make, are making a difference in overall health care delivery, but especially behavioral health care delivery. Um, this, this is going to bring us, we really believe, to that back to that opportunity mm -hmm. uh, to get that initiative funded. So, um, you know, while we've been silent about that for the last six or seven months and continued right throughout our time together over the last couple of years, looking at multiple opportunities to find a way to get that funded, <laughs> We are we are coming back to that commitment that we made um, right with each with each other that that was a next step with this group. So I, personally, I just think that's really exciting um, that we're we're here at the end of you know another year technically for the council uh, that we can look forward now to funding and moving that that step forward. I think another piece of this is that um, this will provide for everyone in the city um, the, the data that they can use to apply for grants. Um, it's not, you know, it'll be done by an independent source, so it won't have like, you know, a particular group's um, kind of agenda on it or slant on it. Um, so I think it's going to be a really powerful document uh, for us to be able to draw on for a number of years. Uh, and when I've seen documents like this in the past, you know, most every grant that you apply for asks what's the need in your city, your area, um, you know, and then how will whatever you're applying for help to address that need. And we've really not had that document to be able to draw on. And with this, we will have that. So, um, as, as Bob has said, I'm just so pleased that, um, you know, we finally found the way to uh, be able to secure the money and the fact that the council had sent that up to the mayor as a part of our COVID-19 uh, request. Um, and while it, you know, we didn't get it immediately, uh, it's so good to see that that he did listen and he did uh, um, respond to that. So very, very pleased about that. Well, I just want to thank everyone. Um, you know, I think this is absolutely a reflection of all of your work in elevating the role of behavioral health in wellness across Metro Nashville. So I want to thank you all for your leadership and your continued leadership as we begin, begin to make inroads in this very important topic and in these services. So thank you. Uh, you know where to reach me if you have any questions. Thank you, dear. And uh, I just wanted to also say, and I um, apologize, there was a comment made about the um, opioids, and I neglected to send you all that report, but I will get that out after the meeting. I, that was not in your packet, but I will send that out. Uh, I also wanted to just note uh, with respect to that report that um, Vanderbilt, uh, we are getting now data from Vanderbilt, so we're excited about that. So we have a more complete picture of what we have in the city. Um, so Jeff to Vanderbilt and everybody at Vanderbilt and Jameson, Thank you for helping to move that through um, because, that, as I said, unless we have a complete picture, um, you know, we, we just, uh, we're not at our optimum in, in terms of being able to respond. So, um, so just to make a note of that. Next agenda item is a uh, report from our nominations committee. Uh, Mary Linden, going to present that this evening. They have your finished everything. Yeah. Um, yes. Hello, everybody. The uh, report is actually the last page in your packet. Um, so if you want to turn to that, I'm going to um, quickly run through the nominations. Um, there we had four existing slots that transitioned to new representatives. Um, ben Middleton um, from Centerstone, who uh, will be re uh, replacing Bob. 
um, and uh, the nonprofit, because um, he's transitioning, period, I guess. Um, Mary uh, Palakowski from Vanderbilt will be uh, we're taking Jameson Norton's position. Jim, um, I hope I get this right. It's a fruit, yes. Um, replacing Brian Gill from St. Thomas. And Megan uh, Houston Lark, um, who is from Metro Public Schools um, Counseling Services, is replacing Tony Majors. Then, if you'll recall, we had some extensive discussion about the types of folks that we needed to incorporate on the council in order to reflect some of our growing initiatives and uh, having robust representation um, from our community. So we have new representatives, um, David Fox, um, uh, recommended by Judge Eisenstein from the business sector. Um, Jimmy Greer, recommended by Major Mayor Cooper, sorry, um, who's uh, with both Friendship Baptist Church as well as uh, having previously served in Metro National Police Department. Judge Linda Jones, also recommended by Mayor Cooper, with extensive um, background in community service and, uh, and a homelessness court that she has established uh, as part of her bench. Inspector uh, David uh, uh, Inhofe with the Metro Nashville Police Department um, and is, uh, if I remember right, an, an inspector, yes, inspector. Um, he joined us uh, earlier this week for our discussion around um, violence and uh, I, I feel certain he'll be a welcome addition to our group. Um, I have a, I would like to point out that these, um, with all of these appointments, we're now at our maximum capacity for membership of 21. So this would be a full um, cohort on the council. And while it does say action underneath this agenda item, um, Angie has let me know that the mayor has approved um, everyone listed and is preparing letters about their appointments. So I think that covers it. True, Angie? Mm -hmm. We will move to formal action. No, me too. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mary Lyndon. Uh, I want to thank all of you too. There, were, you know, some significant input, obviously, early on as this council um, contemplated, um, you know, individuals who would be good additions to this council. Um, several of you made some personal phone calls to ascertain um, interest. Um, from some of those individuals. So just really appreciate the, the again, just the collective involvement that went into um, identifying um, new candidates, uh, nominees uh, for this council, and then obviously uh, mayor's willingness to take the recommendations um, of our council uh, nomination committee uh, and move those forward. So really excited about this, especially the group of new individuals. And then um, just your willingness as current council members to continue to serve. So I want to make sure that doesn't go unnoticed. It's not either um, as we're able to move forward um, all of our current council members. So with with appreciation. So we the, it's anticipated that the new members will join us in June. Yeah. Uh, and before that time, um, Katina and I will be working on an uh, orientation plan for them so that they can come up to speed on the work today. I thought that was kind of interesting when I started thinking about that because I thought we we have had our we had our orientation by you know actually developing the council and, and moving it forward over the past few years and I was thinking back on that and just the the amount of ground that we have been able to cover and, and the impact that we have been able to have and recall that first meeting where we were all thinking okay this is a great idea but you know what are we going to do and what impact are we going to have and it's so gratifying to see that we really have been a working council um, and everybody that was contacted about this was advised of that, that they, you know, these, they're expected to be um, active members of the council. So um, again, Mary Linda, thank you for the report and thank you to everyone who um, stepped up to help us to recruit on these. Any other announcements? Well, announcements, I guess the, you know, we kind of did our announcement at the beginning, uh, which again, uh, you know, Bob, we're so grateful. Oh, thank you. So grateful. And um, Bob will be able to continue uh, with us uh, as a private citizen um, and bring his wealth of knowledge 
uh, to be able to remain on the board. So he won't be a stranger, that's for sure. But uh, again, just so appreciate his leadership. So um, does anybody else have any announcements they'd like to make? I just want to uh, chime in a little bit about Bob. Um, I had the pleasure of working with Bob before I joined this council through my work at the court and with Centerstone, and they were they were terrific to work with. But uh, Bob and Angie, uh, Angie's staying with us, but um, Bob really. Uh, took the leadership role in pulling this together. It's not easy to start a new group and to kind of direct it as you go along. And, um, you know, with with just a, uh, a group of 21 people, I think we started with 21, isn't that right? I think that's... I started with a few less than yeah. that, yeah. We have a full 21. slate at first, but we really wanted to wait to, to see who else Yeah, we well, whatever we were, but it's... I'm pulling together the uh, bylaws and the policies and then directing us. And uh, I, I just, uh, I know I've expressed this to him privately, but uh, um, it's not easy to do. And he did a great job. And of course, Angie, you're a great help too, obviously, but um, you're staying with us. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I wanted, I wanted to say publicly what I've expressed to Bob privately. And I really do appreciate what you've done. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate that. Been a real team effort. Um, I appreciate it. The support, obviously, coming from the Department of Health, um, Angie from DEA is just tremendous. Uh, Katina, you are so going to benefit um, from this level of support. Um, so, just I really appreciate everyone's comments tonight, support, uh, the confidence of uh, allowing me to serve a second year. In this position as well, so thank you much. Do we have a motion for adjournment? So moved. Second. I'll, I'll second it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate hey, all Bob. of you.